Hey, No Code Ops, Phil here uh, with Ravish, uh, who is the VP of Sales at Quixie. Ravish, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, uh, Philip. Yeah, great to have you. So, um, you know, uh, I'd love to just spend a moment learning uh, just top level a little bit more about Quixie. Definitely. Uh, Quixie, again, to just put it in a single uh, statement, right? It's an absolute true no code platform to build your uh, business processes, right? So when I say business process, again, this is one statement, but just to uh, give an understanding of the landscape, um, if I have to just tell you what is possible through no code for business processes, I can keep maybe at a lower of a hockey stick, I can just say what you can achieve with simple like Google Forms, right? So you can just build anything, uh, maybe somebody from the primary school can build something. So that's a, uh, on what you can very quickly build on the business process or a data collection scenario to the highest level of what complexity that you can uh, build with no code. So what we try to do is um, with Quixi, with no code, you should be able to achieve a complex of business process uh, uh, to be built. So that's the, the main objective. And that's where the gap that we saw uh, that a lot of platforms are not able to do. Uh, that's where uh, we, we wanted Quixie to get that or give that power to the business user because the no code, the moment you become no code, it's a business user. It's not the tech user. Yeah. So business user should be able to build. Again, when he's building, that means absolutely no tech background behind. So he should be able to build with no code. But uh, the moment they try to build more, they see that uh, stagnation point. Like, like, okay, oh, I can't achieve more. I can't build more. But with Quixie, you don't get to get to that point. You, you can keep building more and more. Awesome. Love it. So yeah, if you want to take over the screen share uh, and give a demo, uh, that would be awesome. And just sure. you know, showing us uh, what having an aha moment uh, in the product would look like for a user. Definitely. So uh, right. before just start my uh, screen share uh, on giving the context on this, yes, we're talking about business process. I'll try to bring in the user experience first. And then say, let's say there's a process built. Okay, uh, and this is how the process is. What takes to build that? That's that. That will be definitely with, which I want to show. That's how I want to put the demo. Up. So let me just share my screen. Right. Also, welcoming to the video, Anna, who's our chief of staff. Hi. <laughs> We're actually recording this for the No Code Ops uh, demo show. So you oh, made it to the newsletter. Famous. Correct. <laughs> right. So. Um, I hope you're able to see the screen, right? Yeah, great. Yeah. So what you're seeing here as, let's say if there is a particular portal built for your own uh, uh, internal organization, you've built your processes. On the left-hand side, what you're seeing are all the processes that you would have added uh, or built into your account. So they're all available here. You, you, uh, It's very, very, very easy as a folder structure. I just get to create. Uh, uh, what item I need to add, what process I need to add here. Let's say I've built some process. I can just like how you would have built your uh, folder structure into your windows or your- God, I love a good, I love a good folder structure. <laughs> yeah, so you just right. cre create that. And then you, you're actually, while how you're creating folder structure, you have your menu ready available here. So it's uh, uh, not just on uh, this particular aspect. I'm, I'm just talking about a dashboard that you're seeing here. I, I get to just say, just drag and drop, right? So I just drag and drop what I need on my dashboard. Uh, I just add one more uh, thing, uh, one more additional report onto my dashboard as a user. Like you're, we're talking about a user trying to do this, not 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 an as uh, an admin and somebody Ravish, trying to build, right? Yeah. Question. So I see that you're manipulating the dashboard, which is amazing, um, and adding new components to it. But where is this data coming from? Is it internal to Quixi, or is it coming from somewhere else? Yeah, that, that, that again, uh, right question there on the context. Like basically, it, it comes, it can be from internal from Quixi, and most of the data will be internal from Quixi because you're building your processes here. Uh, it makes more sense building the analytics or the transactional uh, reports uh, from the internal data, but not necessary that everything has to be internal data. Uh, while I'm trying to build these reports, let's say if you're seeing here, while I'm trying to build a report, I can create a source, uh, data source out of uh, Quixi. That source can be uh, an internal and also some data coming out from an external data. So you can build that and then over and above that, you can build your reports. When you're trying to create a report, you get to choose different types of reports that you get to choose. Right. So anything that you're trying to do in Quixi is either drag and drop or pick and select. You will not be asked to even write English or just do specific coding or, or, or a config, it'll be configuration uh, everywhere. Right. And, and then, so, so 
for, for like the main type of user who's using Quixie, is it typically like an operations professional? Like I understand it's like a non-technical business user, right? But do you see yeah. a lot of people in HR or procurement or like who's your typical user? Uh, typical user, again, uh, when you're trying to build it, the actual builder would be the, the operational side or the HRs or the, the people operations or the project operations, the people who are main into the business. But definitely because the more and more you start building that IT governance is what uh, always comes into picture because uh, you start building it and then you want to pan it across the organization, then IT governance will come into picture. So it's a combination of team. You build it, or if you want to take it across, build more, big, make it an organization level, that's when the IT team also will pitch in. So it's a together approach. Maybe we call them fusion teams. Great, love it. Right. So uh, again, uh, when you just saw the dashboards, as like when, when I'm trying to make something, it's like drag and drop. Uh, if I have to just give you an experience of, let's say, if in this account, uh, very typical process that you can take a business process, right? Where there's approvals, there are workflows, there are uh, when I ask, when I look at a task, so what should I look at? So, in, in in if I take a simple example here, which is created, this is something where as a user I'm looking at. You don't know what is built behind in this account, how it's been built, what else is there? Because I have certain roles with me as a as in this account, I've logged in as Ravish. If you look at roles, I have certain roles in some uh, processes here. Amazing. You see, only those things are what I'm seeing here. And can you custom define those roles? Yeah, so uh, in, while I'm as an admin, you go, go and then look at uh, users, I can just create my roles. Right. So once you create your roles, you can assign to users one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many, and many-to-one scenarios of this role, uh, user and role uh, uh, mapping. Like for right. example, in this users, you're just selecting a, a user set. All I get to is, oh, this is a user. Any additional role I want to add to him, just go ahead and add. Right. As an admin, I'm doing this. The moment I do this, anything that is responsible for this role, applications to be available for him, dashboards to be available for him, data to be available for this user is like real time done. Awesome. Right. So uh, again, here, if I'm trying to give an experience of one particular process, let's say I have some uh, expense submission to be done. This is an application created or a process created within Quixie, where you see different elements that are popping up, right? There are grids, there are uh, uh, signatures that you can do glass signature, or uh, there is an upload file. There, there can be a, in, in dif different kind of use cases, there can be elements like QR code readers, all that you can just build with no code. Once you do that, let's say I, as an employee, I've submitted this form. This has to go as a workflow to the next person. That means a manager or a workflow yeah. is built. How does that go? It go as a task here. So this task management is inbuilt into the platform. Uh, uh, why I'm explaining this, I want to go back and then show you how a workflow is built. Right? That, that is where the, the wow moment for uh, Quixie is, where I the workflow's task has come here. I click on this. Uh, and then I get to see some data uh, and I, I have some access to this data, some documents I can see. I can also look at some history on where did this uh, uh, process got initiated from. I can go ahead and uh, give some comments here. So there's a workflow and a task management happening. But how does this got built uh, uh, in the first instance? So if I have to uh, uh, talk about what is core to uh, Quixies, we have a lot of wizards, right? The application creation wizard or report creation wizard, database, database creation wizard. So I'll just give a very glimpse uh, view of uh, what a create app uh, uh, wizard would look like, right? So let me just uh, create one and you can just actually create it from blank or you can actually create it from a file or an image or an Excel. You have an ex most of the cases it is like always process transforming from Excel to uh, form, right? So just upload that form, upload that Excel uh, and then it becomes a form for you. If I'm doing it from blank, all you're doing is like uh, drag and drop of these fields here. Yep. And you're creating your form element. But the most important is on the workflow scenario where if you're trying to say it has to go to the next step. So where you saw an experience of, I'm clicking on this uh, form and I click on submit. That is what you're seeing here as yep. a button. I and can then it's go going and add more forward. buttons. I can just say go additional step. And in, within this step, I can add more and more and more buttons. After this, I can just add a conditional step. Just depict the workflow that you have in mind. The application gets created. Very cool. So, my, my 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 so my final question for you is this, right? Like I've seen um, several um, 
call it like business process management softwares out there, right? Where, you know, you can add different users who have different roles. Um, you can create dashboards and different applications. Um, but tell me what makes QuickSee uh, different? Like what is the, the number one thing that makes QuickSee different from all these other kind of BPM platforms? Yeah, so uh, one, uh, one is putting BPM uh, together uh, is, uh, is one and there's BPM and there's rapid application development. Uh, within this, the, the plat what brings in QuickSee as uh, something that is outstanding is you have workflow centric and data centric applications. When I say workflow centric, that means you're driving the process through workflow and it will flow through the workflow and, and you can only access them in the workflow steps and all that. When there is data centric, that means there is database behind, you'll have to build uh, processes with, uh, with uh, uh, using the data. What QuickSee does is it can do both workflow centric and data centric. Mm. Uh, so that, that's a very, uh, uh, very, and these two with no code. What, the platforms out there, like you do workflow centric, the moment you come to data, you, you start doing low code. But what we try to achieve is through no code, do the data centric as well. So that means the uh, data that you're seeing here uh, is like, it is coming from different modules. It can come from different modules. I've, I've submitted one uh, application. It can trigger another module and then, or go change some data elsewhere. So it can achieve all that through no code. That's a very, uh, uh, one one thing that I can uh, name when you're asking for a difference. Super cool. Well, uh, this is awesome. So excited to uh, learn more. Um, tell me, uh, if folks want to get in touch or learn more about QuickSee, what's the best way for them to do it? Best way for them to do is one, uh, get in touch. Uh, is It's as easy as getting to uh, QuickSee.com. Uh, you want to try the platform, go ahead and then try our free trial. You want to talk to sales, write to sales at QuickSee.com. Amazing. Ravish, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for showing me around and uh, yeah, excited uh, for the future of Quixie. Thank you, Philip. Thanks for having us and uh, getting this done. Cool. Thanks, man. Cheers. Bye.